Whenever I interacted with Kaine, I was reminded about something from my past. Maybe my mind has been confusing her with my sister this whole time. Anyway... Kiane's dreams, discrimination. The sound of rain filled the village. The steep cliffs that surrounded the area magnified sound, causing even the slightest drizzle to rattle like a thunderstorm. Thin wisps of smoke st streamed from huts as villagers huddled in their homes and waited out the rain. A single child, however, had, had, had braved the downpour and was now wandering slowly toward the wooden, hawk-shaped weather vane at the centre of the town. The wanderer reached the vane, which had existed for as long as they, any could remember, and stared. The child's face was sim simultaneously delicate and fierce, like a teacup that had survived the shipwreck. Those traits combined with pale white skin to give the face an entirely sexless quality. If the beak turns east, I go home. If it stays west, then I... The child blinked. Rain slowly dripped down the young one's short hair and began its long descent to the ground. Come on. Come on. The child felt a slight breeze and watched as the vein slowly creaked to life. Spinning this way and that for a moment, it finally settled with the beak pointing firmly toward the east. East? Really? Before the vane could, ev could move again, a jagged rock came spinning and tumbling through the air, striking home against the child's head. The force of the blow dropped the child to the ground as a hail of stones began to fall all around. Oh no, they found me. A heartbreaking smile crept across the child's face as the stones continued their assault. Through the rain, the sound of multiple footsteps grew louder before a voice rang out. Yahoo! Kiane! The voice belonged to Dimo, worst of all the bullies in the area. As Keane struggled to stand, a final stone came skittering through the mud and bounced against her foot. Blood oozed from a cut above her eye and blurred her vision, but she could make out the shapes of Dimo and his usual gang of idiots. The boy seemed taken aback for a moment by Keane's seeming indifference to the blood dripping from her face but quickly regained his bravado. What's up, freak? You like the rain? You like getting all wet? Or did you finally decide to run away from home? Though she knew it was futile, Keane turned to leave. Before she could move more... Before she could get more than a few steps, the other children scrabbled to surround her, cruelty burning in their eyes. Keane knew they, those were not the only eyes on her, the tormentor's parents watched from the safety of their homes. She was attuned to this sensation. It was one she had experienced many times before. While some, some villagers simply turned a blind eye to the actions of their children, many encouraged it openly. In a society ruled by superstition and fear, Kiane was something to be hated, and if possible, destroyed. I didn't say you could leave, freak. Dimo's words chewed out of her like a worm through an apple. He can't hurt me, she lied to herself. Be strong. Be brave. He can't hurt me. He can't hurt me. He can't hurt. Oh look, the little freak's gonna cry. What's wrong? Are you sad that everyone hates you and wants you dead? Keane prayed for the rain to flood down and carry her away from a world that seemed to have no place for her. But if there were gods, they chose to ignore her. As Dimo cr crept ever closer, the clouds began to thin and the rain slowed. Even the weather hates me. I'm useless. A failure. I wish Dimo's rock had taken my head off. Dimo, uh, sorry. Kiane couldn't meet Dimo's leering gaze. She lowered her eyes and stared at the muddy ground below. The bully moved forward until she was inches away. She could smell the scent of old meat on his breath. 
boy grabbed Kayane's face with thick fingers and yanked it upward. She tried to turn away, but he forced her gaze back and jammed his thumb against her eyelid to pry it open. Show me. N no Did you just say no? Dimo grinned evenly. You don't say no to me. No one says no to me. Not even taking his attention from Kiana, he called to his cohorts. Come on guys, let's give the freak what she deserves. As soon as Dimo finished, kicks and blows began to rain down upon Kiana. Dimo paused, still grinning as Kiana curled up, curled into a ball and tried to make the pain stop. I don't get you, freak. What you acting like a girl for, huh? Everyone knows what you really are. Kiana ignored the question, choosing instead to stare at the weather vane. It continued to point east, as it supremely confident about the future it had chosen for her. Go home. Yeah, that's a funny joke for someone with dead parents and no home to go to. Freak, chanted the children. Freak, freak, freak. Kiana closed her eyes and listened to the rain, waiting for the pain to start again. As the clutching hands of the village children closed around her, she bent her mind to the sound of the rain, letting it become her world entire tire. The rain fell, but the pain never came. Only when the laughter of her tormentors turned to terrified cries did she dare open a single blood-caked eye. Kiana was shocked to see Dimo sprawled on the ground, holding his head and screaming in pain. She could see blood welling from spaces between his fat, twisted fingers. Oh my god, he's crying. He's actually crying. Deprived of their leader, the other children glanced back and forth between themselves, as if waiting for someone to step forward and take charge. When no saviour emerged, they began an uneasy shuffle away from Keanu. But the young girl was the least of their concerns, and said their attention was wrapped on the ancient woman standing a few feet away. After struggling for breath for a moment, she finally spoke in a voice thick with rage. Hurts like a bitch, don't it? Now I suggest you scatter before I throw another one. If, and if any of you little bastards ever touch my Kiana again, I'll do far worse than throw a rock. You can count on it. The old woman crouched down and gently touched the hand Dimo was using to cover the wound. Before he could think to protest, she ground her palm into the wound and twisted back and forth. Ow! He screamed, leaping to his feet. Stop it! What are you doing? Quit with it. With it. Ain't no one ever died from scratch. You hit me with a rock, you stupid bitch. A big one. That thing could have killed me. The old woman shrugged. Death is the best cure for stupid. Dimo's face twisted with rage at her words, locking his eyes on Keanu. He took a step backward and spat on the ground. Get out. Leave this village. No one wants you here. Either of you. Seeing the old woman grab another stone, Dimo and his companions turned tail and ran. As they fled, the old woman grabbed her side and barked out a single laugh. Ha! Huh, look at the fat boy go. Guess he's healthy enough to run from a fight. That woman's smile faded as she turned her attention to Keanu. Kneeling down, she removed her shawl and placed it around the young girl's shoulders, then produced a cloth from the folds of her dress and began blotting out the blood on her forehead. Ah, oh, Keanu, why don't you fight back? You're stronger than that lot. The words of her grandmother stung Keanu and she turned away. Don't be nice to me. She said, I don't deserve it. Nothing, nothing matters anymore. Her tears held in check for so long, finally began to fall on the muddy ground below. Everyone hates me. They think I cause bad things to happen. They think I'm a freak. I wish I was dead. As Keanu's tears turned to sobs, and she felt her grandmother's hands on her shoulders. Despite her advanced age and diminutive size, she was a woman of surprising strength, and Keanu found herself unable to turn away. Don't talk to me like that, girl. It's a river wide and deep that flows between the realms of this world and the next, and it grants no mercy to any that attempt the crossing. You got a duty to fight until your last breath. Understand? The old woman tightened her grip and tied, tried to still the tremor in her voice. You know the pain of losing. Every, someone close to you, Keanu. No, because you survived it. As the words hit home, Keanu was struck by the force of her love for the old woman. As a young child, she didn't even know of her grandmother, but when her parents died, the woman quickly accepted her as her own. 
grandmother was Keane Calder, as Keane Calder, was cunning, vulgar, and quick to violence, and their first few years together had not been easy. But with each year that passed, Keane and her grandmother had grown closer. However, it was only now, sitting in the mud with tears and bl blood caking her face, that Keane truly understood the depths of her affection. Here was a woman who had seen hard times, who had seen death, who had fought through all these things and somehow emerged on the other side. If anyone could understand Keanu's pain and loneliness, it was her. Do you... do I make you sick, Grandma? Of course not, don't be an ass. Keanu drew her grandmother's moth-eaten shawl around her body and shuddered. But my body... it's not... normal. If I was normal, then Mum and Dad wouldn't... Hush, interrupted Grandma. I not hear another word of this nonsense. You're my granddaughter, and I love you, and if folks have a problem with that, they can just go to hell. With that, the old woman reached out and placed a wreath of dry flowers in Keanu's hair. The skill it took to bend the flowers without breaking the stems or losing a single pe petal was remarkable, and the beauty of it made Keanu want to cry all over again. Oh my gosh, these are lunar tears. Grandmother, you made this for me? Lunar tears are legendary flowers. Most people could live their entire lives without ever seeing one, and yet her grandmother had somehow collected a dozen or more. Keane reached up and touched the wreath, as if she couldn't believe it was real. W where did you find these? Just stumbled on them while I was out doing the shopping. The old woman turned away as she spoke, leading Keane to suspect that the search had been more difficult than she was letting on. The pain that sh sorry, the pain she took to construct the ornament, let alone track down the flowers using its construction, made Keanu's heart hurt. She reached up and gently adjusted the wreath, admiring the way it felt between her fingers. Didn't quite turn out right, said her grandmother as she squinted at it. These old hands have trouble with delicate work, but it sure looks good on a pretty girl like you. Keanu blushed and turned away. You you think I'm pretty? Of course you are. What a fool to say. A fool thing to say. Th thank you, Grandma. Her grandmother smiled. We're gonna be fine, you and me, she said. As long as we got each other, we'll just be fine. Keanu took her grandmother's hand in hers, and the two of them struggled to their feet. As they began the long walk home, Keanu gripped the hand with all her might, as if trying to smoke from drift trying to stop smoke from drifting away in the wind. The rain had stopped. Keane stood beneath the weather vane, watching it spin in lazy circles, no longer caring about the direction it faced when it stopped. I don't need to escape, I have a home now. Grandmother, Grandma loves me, and that's enough. Even if it's against the world. Keane let her gaze drift, drift up past the vane and into the cloudy sky. The last faint hints of a rainbow were slowly fading. As she turned and headed for home, the light scattered into a million particles and vanished, seemingly taken away on the breeze. Keanu's Dreams Daily Life In the distance, Keanu heard the steady sounds of an axe striking wood. The noise had a purposeful quality to it, as if she was hearing a master woodsman go about his work. The firewood being produced, however, was as far from a work of art as could be. Pieces of every shape and size were being flung about a barren yard with wild abandon. Anyone trying to stack such wood would probably die of frustration before the job was through. Stupid piece of shit axe. Keanu's grandmother flared away with the axe, filling the air with both splinters of wood and words that would make the most hardened sailor blush. Grandma, called Keanu. That's you, Keanu yelled the old woman, taking her eyes off the wood for a moment. Don't get too close or I might take your goddamn foot off by mistake. She f brought the axe down on a piece of wood, sending chips flying in every direction. One spun past Keanu close enough for her to hear the whistle, at which point she decided to step back. Once she scuttled to a safe distance, she cupped her hands around her mouth and shouted, Grandma, do you need help? I can get you water or lunch or... Uh, a new axe or something. The axe poised to strike another wobbly blow, paused in midair. The old woman considered her granddaughter's offer for a moment, then smiled. Tell you what, 
since I'm doing such a piss poor job of chopping, why don't you come here and take over so I can go get the water? Shades have been restless lately and I don't want you running into one of them bastards. Relinquishing the axe, her grandmother picked up a long pole with wooden buckets on either end. Gathering water was by far the most difficult of the two jobs, but Keanu knew better than to complain. Once Grandma's mind was set, there was no changing it. Keanu did her best to help with chores, but Grandma took every task that required travel to the village. Though she had a long list of plausible excuses, Keanu knew the real reason. She didn't want her granddaughter to be taunted and harassed by the villagers. Once Keanu moved in, Grandma decided to take up residence a good distance from the area. Out of sight, out of mind, seemed to be the best policy when it came to the villagers and her granddaughter. A rare were, and rare were the days when any but two of them could be found on the rocky acre of land they called home. Kiani enjoyed the solitude, but harboured a silent, a secret resentment that her grandmother was forced to spend her golden years in such a place. After watching her grandmother leave, Kiana turned her attention to the task at hand. She had never chopped wood before in her life, and soon discovered why the old woman hated the chore. Swing after swing of the axe produced only a tiny crack in the wood, and when she finally managed to connect with a solid stroke, the tool embedded itself in the log and refused to budge. Frustrated, Keanu swung the axe around her head and threw it, log and all, across the yard. <laughs> damn, damn it, ah, uh, crap. She suddenly understood the joy her grandmother felt in a good curse. <laughs> Happy now, she picked up the axe, forced it from the wood and resumed chopping. She had a natural skill with the blade, but the task was challenging and blisters soon began to form in her small pink hands. This is tough, and my logs are all weird sizes. Spitting on her palms and ignoring the pain, Keanu redoubled her efforts. Just as she was developing a rhythm, Grandma returned from the village. S setting down her buckets with a small sigh, she took one look at the logs and coughed up a wheezy laugh. Pretty clumsy girl, you better practice if, if you... Her grandmother suddenly collapsed to her knees, causing one of the buckets to wobble pre pre precariously? <laughs> That's a... New one? <laughs> Eyes wide, Keanu dropped the axe and ran to her grandmother's side. Grandma! The old woman shook her head and pointed a trembling finger at the bucket. Get get the bucket. Ca can't let it spill. Keanu steadied the bucket with a foot as she knelt by her grandmother. A small bit of water sloshed over the side and made a new home in the hem of her dress, but Keanu didn't notice. Grandma? Grandma, what's happening? Crazed with panic, she grabbed the, her grandmother by the soldiers, shoulders and shook. After a moment, the woman lifted her arms and battered Keanu away. St stop that, just stop. Breathing he she cried, breathing heavily. It ain't like I'm dying. Just tired from the trip is all. Keanu desperately wanted to believe her, but one look at the old woman's shaking hands and worn face told her more than words ever could. Her grandmother had lived a long, hard life, and it seemed the bill help was finally coming due. The time when her grandmother watched over Keanu was ending. Sooner than either of them had feared, the positions would be reversed. The next morning, Keanu came to the side of her grandmother's bed and took her wrinkled hand. Grandma, you're sick. You need medicine. I'm going to the, I'm going to the village. The old woman shook her head and tried to rise. But Keane gently pushed her down. It's alright, she said. I'll be fine. Her grandmother fixed her with a gaze that could melt steel. <laughs> After what seemed an eternity, she finally lowered her eyes and sighed. Well, I don't like it. God damn it. But I guess I shouldn't should be quitting being so stubborn and let you grow up. The old woman watched as Keane strapped on her boots and made her way down the road to the village. Hours later, as, uh, as an unseen sun made its way across a dark, rainy sky, she was still watching. Keanu moved at a brisk pace, checking her pockets every few minutes to make sure the money her grandmother gave her was still there. Every noise caused her to spin on her heels, making sure she wasn't being stalked by a shade, or worse, Dimo and his gang. But she encountered neither tormentors nor shades, and Keanu finally found herself at the entrance to the village. The few adults she could see glanced sideways at her, then matted to each other behind raised hands before, before slinking away into the shadows. Her heart racing, Keanu took a series of rapid, shallow breaths and tried to calm herself. I have to prove myself. I have to help Grandma. I have to be strong. 
She chanted those words to herself over and over as she slowly made her way. Finally, her eyes settled on a rotted older woman who was angrily waving her arms in the air and telling anyone who was would listen exactly what she thought of Kiana's presence. Hey lady, said Kiana with a bravado she did not feel. Where's the hypocrisy? <laughs> I struggle to pronounce some of these words, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm trying my best. The woman's flabby cheeks shook, shook in bewildered anger. How dare this this thing speak to me, they seemed to say, but Kiane saw her, that her eyes held a different emotion. Fear. Yeah, we're both scared, lady. Trust me on this one. Which way, Kiane repeated. The woman pointed at a small building to her right before hitching up her dress and stumbling off in another direction. Kiane cringed, expecting a stone to come flying from the assembled crowd, but none came. Her mind was filled with a strange sense of pride as she made her way to the hypocrisy. I at least hope that is... I'm really hoping I'm pronouncing that word right. But the new emotion had little time to take fruit, for as soon as she opened the door, she noticed a familiar customer at the counter. It was Demo. He'd clearly been sent here on some kind of family errand, because his gang of followers was nowhere to be found. Oh my god, he spotted. I mean, uh, uh, what are you doing here, freak? The insult was delivered without force, and Kiane happily ignored it. Stretching on tiptoes to see over the counter, she asked the shopkeeper for the medication. Ha! Huh, barked Demo. That old bitch finally kneel over. Go to hell, Demo. The boy's eyes grew so wide they seemed ready to fall out of his head. But before he could let fly a comeback, or worse, a punch, the apothecary told them to knock it off before he kicked them out of the store. Dimo slunk out of the shop, cursing Keanu under his breath. Once he was gone, she allowed herself to breathe once more, taking a brief tour of the shop while the owner prepared her medication. Countless tiny bottles filled the cramped store, each with a label written in some in indecipherable language. A notion of aromas assaulted her nose, creating a scent that was exotic, but not altogether unpleasant. Seeing such a variety of supplies gave Kiani a sense of peace. Surely in a world so vast there will be a place that she can call home. On the far wall behind the counter rested a portrait of a stunning young girl. The picture had once contained bright, vibrant colours, but time had worked its cruel magic, and they, they were beginning to fade. The beauty of the work, however, remained undiminished. You like that picture? Kiani turned to find the apothecary <laughs> with a small vial of medicine in his hand. His eyes were gentle but sad, and they seemed to stare through her and into nothing as she spoke. That's my daughter. I sketched it when she was just a little girl. She's been dead a long time now. Kiana didn't know how to respond. She just stared at the portrait and tried to come up with the right words. Pictures are wonderful things, continued the shopkeeper. They let the ones closest to you live on forever. She shook his head si slightly, then looked down at Kiana and smiled, handing her the medicine. He reached out in... Sorry. He reached into the, his sizable green apron and produced a handful of old wax crayons. You should have these. There's no one left that I wish to draw. Keanu took an instinctive step back, causing the shopkeeper's face to darken. Yes, I've heard the rumours about you, he said. It's a small village, and word travels quickly. Between you and me, I'm not sure which of them to believe, but I don't think they matter much. I know your grandmother, Ka Callie, and I think the way she was driven out of this town was just deplorable. Grandma's name was Kelly, thought Kiane suddenly. She was still mulling this new fact over in her mind as she reached out and gently took the crayons from the apothecary's hands. Your grandmother is an old friend of mine, he said as Kiane scooted away yet again, and I owe her much. I'll wager she would like it if you drew a picture of her. Yes, I think she would like that very much. Kiane murmured a quite, quite agreement. But inside her heart was but but the I'm gonna start that again, sorry. <laughs> Kiane murmured a quiet agreement, but inside her heart was bursting. Never before had a villager treated her with anything but complete contempt. It was a tiny, almost imperceivable step, but it was a step nevertheless. 
and with enough tiny steps, she might one day rediscover the rest of the world. When Kiana returned home, she found her grandmother asleep in her bed. Her feet were blackened and raw, even bleeding a bit in places, leading Kiana to think that she had been pacing around the room until exhaustion finally caught up with her. She placed the medicine by her grandmother's pillow and turned to leave, but found the old woman's hand collapsed around her arm. Back already, are you? asked her grandmother with a yawn. Come here, let me have a look at you. Grandmother sat up and examined examined Keane from head to toe. Finally satisfied that nothing terrible had befallen her grandchild, she leaned back and allowed herself to relax. Well, how was it? Those bosses give you any trouble? It was kind of fun, with Keane with, said Keane with a small smile. No, seriously, it was. Fun, eh? Asked her grandmother in a voice which implied she believed anything but. Uh-huh, so anytime you need me to run an errand, just let me know. As she spoke, Kiana removed the crayons from her pocket. After its brief explanation of their source, she informed her grandmother that she was going to, s to sketch her portrait. A portrait of me? Ridiculous. No one wants to stare at a wrinkled old crone. But grandma, I'll make you live forever. Oh shit, said her grandmother, throwing back the sheet from her bed. Living forever would just piss me off. Now put those crayons away and help me with dinner. But Kiana would not relent. And in the end, Grandma found herself leaning against the wall of their house as if posing for a master artist. Keane stood, took up the crayons, eyed her subject carefully, and set to work. Just as her grandma was about to nod off, Keane finished the piece. After staring at it for a bit, she released it from her grip and let it slowly drift to the floor. It's terrible, it doesn't look like you at all. I'm sorry, Grandma, I thought these crayons would, you know, make drawing easy or something. The old woman's eyes narrowed at her granddaughter's disappointment. Let me be the judge of that, she said, ignoring the pain in her back and reaching for the paper. The sketch could have been a person's face. It also could have been a boulder, a lump of clay, or an incredibly misshapen loaf of bread, all rendered in a chaotic array of colours. The old woman stared at the picture for a long time, then slowly wheezed out a laugh. Oh, Keanu, she said between laughter. You truly are my blood. You're as clumsy as me, and I love it. But, hush, I won't hear any more bull about how ugly you think this is. It came from the heart, and, it, and I'll treasure it always. True to her word, the old woman gave the picture a place of honour above the kitchen table. In the days that followed, Keanu would often catch her staring at the portrait with a strange smile on her face an action she interpreted as silent mocking laughter. A week later, Keane could stand it no long, no more, and asked her grandmother to take the artwork down. Posh, said the old woman, I'll take this down when they roll me into the, my shroud. She pondered this for a bit, then turned to Keane and dropped to one knee. Listen to me, girl. Seeing this picture makes me happy all in a way I've never felt before and it makes me want to go on, so that one someday you can feel the same happiness. It was a moment that burned itself in Keanu's memory, a perfect blend of pride and love and joy that came together to form a lifelong remembrance. She swore to never forget this moment, to never forget the old woman who had made her place in the world possible. Time moves on. People and memories move in and out of life like ghosts passing through a hall. But this moment will be different, Keanu swore, because I'll remember it forever. Forever. Keanu's dreams. Separation. Keanu listened to the sound of crackling firewood instead of the black object on her plate. She'd be pushing it around the wooden disc for a good ten minutes, ignoring the bemused stare of her grandmother. Finally, she su summoned her courage and gave the object a brief sniff. A sharp, bitter scent flew up her nostrils and made it home there, causing her face to twist with disgust. Grandma, I can't believe you want me to eat a bug. The old woman threw some more wood under the cooking pot and snorted. It's no bug, you fool girl, it's a berry. Why the hell would you be feeding you would I be feeding you bugs? Yeah, well, it sure looks like a bug, said Keanu, and I think it's burnt or something because it smells terrible. With that, Keanu held her nose and threw the berry in her mouth, chewing as little as possible. Oh yeah, that's terrible, alright. Why you little brat laughed the old woman? 
Look at the sass on you. You've been spending too much time with me, and that's a fact. Five years have passed since the moment when Keanu's grandmother saved her from the bullies. As, as is often the way with st two stubborn people, their relationship had grown in fits and starts, but moved forward all the same. Meals that used to be somber affairs were now filled with laughter and hurled abuse in equal measure. Keane could not remember a time when she had been happier. As the years went by, Keane started to shoulder more and more of the daily responsibilities. Her grandmother's legs grew weaker by the day and she could no longer do many of the chores she used to take for granted. And so this morning found Keane lacing up her work boots with a breakfast of burnt berry rolling through her belly. Where are you going today? asked Grandma suddenly. Keanu looked up surprised. The old woman rarely asked for specifics anymore. Well, I was going to check out the camla trees and see if they were ripe. I thought we could take some, make some jam or something. Oh, and I'm going to pick up some flagstones, so I need to take the wheelbarrow. Flagstones? What in the hell for? Keanu stared at her grandmother, then held out an arm and swept it around their home. Constructed mostly of cloth, rope, and rubble, the old place sagged like a box in the round, final round. Grandma, a dying cat could chew through this house. I'm going to build a stone wall so we can have some protection. The old woman laughed, exposing a toothless grin to the world. Goddamn girl, if a bunch of thieves want to ransack this old place, let them come. we got nothing worth stealing anyway. I'm not worried about thieves, I'm worried about shades. People saw one west of the village yesterday. The old woman tilted her head and stared at her granddaughter. Well, shoot, I don't know why you have to do it today. We can worry about it some other... Grandma, no. If I don't go to the Kelman trees, we won't eat tonight. You know that. A confused expression passed across the old woman's face, and for a moment she was a small child lost at a carnival. Y yes, she said after a bit. Yes, of course, you're right. I'm sorry, Keanu. Bailey seems to mind is... She didn't finish the thought. Instead, walking over to the nightstand and gently taking the wreath of lunar tears from the drawer, the flower's petals had aged at a bri brilliant whiteness, and Keanu thought it was more beautiful now than the day she first received it. You're going to be a true woman soon, Grandma said, as she placed the flowers in the girl's hair. So that means less chatter about shades and building defensive walls, and more talk about how beautiful you've become. Annoyed, Keanu reached up to remove the garland, but the look on her grandmother's face stopped her hand. You're a beautiful thing, said the old woman, and there ain't nothing like you in all of the world. I'm very proud of you. Okay, Grandma, that's enough goddamn compliments for one day. Such a mouth on you, where did that come from? Gee, I wonder. I'll teach you to sass me, girl, yeah, Grandma. Suddenly, she lurched forward and grabbed Keanu by the ears, pulling her around the room and a crazed grin on her face. Grandma, yelled Keanu in a quaking voice. Grandma, stop it, what the hell? The old woman stared at her and blinked and slowly held her wrinkled hands out as if she, as if it was the first time she had ever seen them. Oh, oh, I didn't know what happened there. I'm sorry, girl. Sometimes my mind just... Keanu thought the look on her grandmother's face was the most heartbreaking thing she had ever seen. Listen, she began. Maybe I should stay home after all. No, I have. I won't have you stay here to keep an eye on an old codger like me. You go get your fruit and your wool and whatnot. I'll be fine. And when you come back, I'll have a nice grasshopper dinner waiting for you. Keanu rolled her eyes, then kissed her grandmother on the forehead and made ready to depart, trying desperately to ignore the worry that was gnawing gnawing at the walls of her heart. Keanu would feel the old woman's eyes watching her as she moved down the path. Don't turn around, don't turn around, she told herself, but in the end the temptation was too great. She spun on her heel for one final look and saw a small, bent woman standing in front of a ramshackle hut with a sad expression on her face. God, she looks so old now. It's like the wind could reach down and just carry her away. Keanu worried about her grandmother all day, causing her work to suffer. What little fruit she could collect was tossed carelessly in the wheelbarrow, and she only found a couple of stones before losing interest in the project. Finally, at dusk approached, she decided to call it a day. 
cursing herself for the lack of pro focus, Keanu pushed the nearly empty wheelbarrow back down the path. As she crested the final hill, she suddenly froze in place. The wheelbarrow fell from her fingers and collapsed on its side, sending a few pieces of wrinkled brown fruit rolling back down the hill. Her gaze was transfixed by a thick black cloud that hovered just ahead, tracing its path with a finger. Keanu suddenly felt her stomach knot in on herself. Oh god, no, oh gods, no. Her grandmother's house was ablaze, the flames licking up as, it tr as if trying to touch the sky itself. Grandma, Grandma! Keanu ran then faster than she could ever move in her life. Once she tripped on a stone and went sprawling into the rocky ground, but she leapt to her feet and continued running, unmindful of the blood that spilled from her wounded hands and knees. As she got closer and closer, Keanu's mind began to race in time with her footfalls. It's too dark. It's too dark. No, just fire. I can't be fired. Too much smoke. Gotta save her. Gotta save her. She burst into the front yard and came to a sudden halt. Her worst suspicions confirmed. The smoke from the fire was mingling with the thick, in thick in inky blackness of an enormous shade. The massive creature supported itself on three twisted legs and achieved balance through means of a large arm and tail. Scales, horns and claws sprouted from its body in a random chaotic pattern, giving it the appearance of a lizard designed by some insane god. Seeing Keane it let out a roar and flicked its tail, sending small whirlwinds spinning around the yard. For a moment the creature returned, retreated into a shimmery inky blackness, as if her mind was unable to comprehend that such a thing could ex actually exist. But then the smell hit her, a blend of rotted meat and excrement, and the horror became real once more. The creature bellowed again, and this time Keanu responded with a scream of her own. Alright you bastard, she thought as she, her scream echoed off the high cliffs around them. It's you, and, you or me, let's go. The shade eyed Keane with bemused interest, then it began looking from her to the house and back again, as if urging her to look at the destruction it had so gleefully wrought. With dreadful, with dread building in her heart, Keane glanced toward the house. Through the smoke and flames, she spotted a small figure struggling to escape the ruins. Grandma! At the sound of her voice, the old woman began waving frantically. She's alive, thought Keane, alive. Keane's legs sprang to life as she raced across the yard toward the flaming wreckage of the house. Before she could advance more than a few steps, the shade opened its mouth and let out a roar powerful enough to uproot trees and send them flying. The blast sent Keane tumbling through the air before smashing her against a rocky earth. Stars danced in front of her eyes as she tried to remember how her legs worked. Get up. Get up. Get up, get up, get up, get up now. As Keanu struggled to her feet, the shade stomped toward the house and pinned her grandmother to the ground with the tip of her claw. The old woman struggled to move the claw from her stomach, but she might well have been pushing a mountain. She coughed briefly, sending a small spray of blood into the air, then collapsed to the ground, her energy spent. Keanu lurched to her feet, only to fall back to earth with a gasp. Her ankles were on fire, one or both of them were surely broken. Ignoring the pain that screamed through her body, she began dragging herself across the ground, leaving a drunken trail of dust and blood in her wake. G grandma Hold on. Just a little longer. Her grandmother's face was turning blue, her eyes rolling back, until only the whites were exposed. Keanu pulled herself across the ground with maddening slowness, the distance seeming to increase with every second that passed. The shade glanced between the two women and flicked out its tongue, its giant mouth turning up at the corners, short, panting breaths belched from somewhere deep inside its core. Bastard laughing at us. She had no idea how much mindfulness the creature could experience in motion, but there could be no doubt the shade was taking joy in their suffering. Yet, yeah, I see your plan. The shade moved its core slightly, allowing Grandma to breathe again. It was clearly keeping her alive, only to snuff out her life when Keanu was close enough to touch her. I'm gonna kill this bastard. Summoning all her strength, Keanu rose from her feet. There was a sickening snap in her, from her right ankle as the foot twisted backwards, but she forced it from her mind and began to hobble toward the monster. Pulling a small knife from the pouch at her waist, she leapt at the f on the foot that pinned her grandmother and plunged the weapon deep. 
Give her back, she screamed. Give her back to me. But it was like stabbing a rock. After a few swipes, the knife broke at the hilt with a dull snap. The shade panted laughter again, then raised its tail and sent it rushing through the air toward the young girl that was latched to its foot. Kiane never had a chance. The tail struck her square in the chest and sent her crashing into the burning wreckage of the home. As she lay on the ground with blood pouring from multiple wounds, a small, weak voice spoke up. Ki Kiane? Kiane vi Kiane's vision blurred as she forced herself to focus on the sound. Finally, her eyes cleared enough for her to make out her grandmother's hands reaching out to her through the smoke. G Grandma? Kiane, you gotta run, you can't beat this one. Kiane grabbed the hands and held on with all her strength. Grandma, come on, we have to go. The old woman coughed loudly. One of her hands, slick with blood, slipped from Kiana's grasp and thumped to the ground below. Grandma, n no! I said run, goddammit, you have to ha have to have to live. You have to get through. The thought would stay forever unfinished before she could say another word. The shade's clawed foot descended, smashing through the remains of the roof and down upon the shattered figure of the old woman. Blood oozed from gaps in the creature's toes as the terrible, putrid smell assaulted Kiana's nose once again. She stared at the foot, dumbfounded, convinced that she was seeing what she was seeing could not possibly be real. When the creature finally lifted its appendage, all that remained underneath was a twisted, unrecognizable mass of rubble and red. Her grandmother was gone. Kiane blinked, trying to feel the hands which had been in hers just a moment before. For a f fleeting instant, she could remember the warmth of that embrace, the trembling of the fingers, but then the sensation drifted away on the breeze and was gone. Memories flashed through Kiane's mind, one after the other, faster and faster, till they became a meaningless jangle of noise. Kiane screamed, then a thunderous sound that echoed off the cliffs and seemed to roll away forever. The shade eased forward, black inker poured from its mouth, and dissolving into smoke on the ground below. The earth shook with every step as it crept toward its prey. Kiane's body slowly rose as if controlled by a mad puppet master. Her arms and legs were bent at impossible angles. Her head rolled dangerously to the side, yet somehow she managed to stand. Staring at the shade, her eyes began to glow with the deep red fire. The creature, so confident just moments before, took a slow hesitant step backward, trying to discern if this broken human could possibly pose a threat. Kiane seized the moment, laughing like a madwoman. She leapt into the air and plunged the shattered hilt of her knife deep into the leg of the shade. The shade shook Kiane off like a fly, sending her crashing to the earth once again. Her chest rose and fell slowly, as if the great weight would rest on it. Moist sounds of, the pa of pain echoed through her mind, something warm and thick oozed from her ears. Is that blood? I think it is. I think I'm bleeding to death. No, can't, can't die. Grandma told me to live. Deep inside Kiana's mind, something finally broke. The sound, the pain, the smoke and the flames, all of it faded away until all that remained was a single incantation repeated over and over again. Kill it. 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 Get a lot of kill it. <laughs> kill it now. As the spark was... Sorry. As the spark that was Keanu slowly began to flicker and die, she felt her desire to kill and her desire to live blend into one. The distance between heartbeats grew longer and longer and longer. <laughs> the beast approaches. Oh, I know. I'm guessing I'm fighting this. Okay. 
anger this creature must have. How did it even survive these past five years? I'm not gonna let this happen again. It dies today. So is this the shade that kills Kiana's grandmother? It's not the blade, but the skill of the user. Strike it down. Ow. Last one. There we go. Then I think it does this weird spinny thing. No? Okay. Now yeah, it does this weird spinny thing. No, it just dies. Okay. I guess it's not meant to be a full on boss battle again, I think. Ouch. That would have hurt a lot. Kiani's Dreams Encounter Gently, weakly, softly, the shade sure that its tormentor was dead turned and stomped off toward the horizon, stopping, stopping along the way to bellow one final roar. Couldn't kill it. Shamed beyond imagining, Kiani tried to turn her head to the side, but only succeeded in coughing up a huge gout of blood. It was getting difficult to see, and only after a moment of fierce concentration did she realise that her left eye was gone. Laughing to herself, she turned her remaining eye to the ruins of her home and noticed a ragged stump of arm resting a few feet away. Yeah, that's mine, she thought with a mad giggle. This is gonna make clapping a real bitch. Huh, <laughs> cried a sudden voice from the depths of her mind. Finally gonna die, are you? Well, you had it coming. Go to hell, Dimmo, she thought at that unseen assailant. Go to hell before I pluck out your eyes and feed them to a dog. The voice of her childhood terror evaporated into smoke, only to be replace, replaced by another, more recent voice. Hold still, said the apothecary, materialising from the ruins like a ghost. I want to draw you. That way you can live forever. No, stop. Don't want to live forever. Want to die right here. I see, he said quietly. Well, if that's what you want... The spectral shopkeeper flooded in and out of existence for a moment, then produced a piece of paper and sketched quickly. After a few seconds, he turned the page to Keane and smiled. Since you rejected my offer, I decided to draw something else. It was a picture of her grandmother, real as life. Keane opened her mouth to thank the man, but stopped as the picture began to blacken in the middle. Before she could say anything, dozens of multi-legged insects began to swarm across the image, tearing at it with sharpened pieces. Stop. No, don't hurt that picture. Keane reached out with her remaining arm and waved futilely at the air. To her surprise, the insects fell off the picture and the ground into the ground below, where they vanished into tiny black tendrils of smoke. Relieved, Keane turned her good eye back to the picture, only to open her mouth in a silent scream. The sketch now showed her grandmother as she truly was, a smashed, unrecognisable lump of nothing. The apothecary smiled, then broke into a jolly dance. See that? He cried as he danced in his jig. It's perfect now. She looks like, just like you. Ha ha ha. I look like that? Oh god, oh god, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Drowning in despair, Keanu laid her head back in the mud and smoke of a ruined house and waited for the end to come. Just before she let everything go, an unfamiliar voice began whispering in her ear. Ain't you got a wish, sunshine? The voice was vulgar and fierce at the same time, as if insanity had somehow found a way to take form. Keane wanted to scream as the voice crawled under her skin, but her lungs f refused to work. You know, a wish? Like a prayer or something? Why don't you get on your knees and start praying to heaven? Please, invisible men in the sky, save me, save me. <laughs> 
Keanu finally resorted to shouting at the voice in her mind. I don't make misses. They don't come true for me. I'm a curse. A freak. I shouldn't be left to die. The other voice boomed in her ears. Oh ha ha ha. Oh god, you are the best. Keanu glanced down and saw a black shiny substance oozing from her legs. She tried to brush it away, but her remaining arm would no longer respond. The substance slowly crept around her feet, and then slowly moving up toward the rest of her body. Is this death? Is this what it's like? Or is my mind just losing itself? She could feel the slime oozing upward, feel the hot searing pain that it left, left in its wake. Whatever else might be happening, she was still alive, and this was real. Come on, said the voice, let it go. Keanu tried to ignore the voice and concentrate on the pain, but the newcomer had, would have none of it. Don't ignore me, sunshine. You're ready to give up, ready to die, so why not let me have it? <laughs> what? Your body, come on, give it to me. Give it to me, I want to stand on the ground, feel the rain, taste the wind. The voice paused, as if licking its lips. When it resumed, it was filled with mad, unabated joy. And I want to take your hands and use them to choke the goddamn life out of people. I want to tear out their throats and bathe them, bathe in the blood like, just like before. In response, Keanu shifted her head and vomited. The warmth of it crept down her front and mingled with the pain of the encroaching Blake ooze. Are you a shade? <laughs> yeah, maybe. What of it? The slime reached her face, crept up past her nose and slowly oozed into the sockets of her missing eye. The moment it touched her brain, Keanu was struck by the most powerful sensation she had ever felt of her life. It was ecstasy. She wanted to scream with delight, but all she could manage was a small whispered moan. Feels good, don't it? asked the voice with a chuckle. Yeah, what can I say? I know how to please the ladies. Now give me that body. Come on, give me that body and I'll give you more of this feeling. It's a fair trade. Black lump began to protrude from Kiana's side as she watched it grew longer and long longer and thicker, eventually taking the form of her missing arm. I can see better, she thought. My eye must be growing back too. The slime reached up to envelope the rest of her face, but she managed to brush it away. St stop, she whispered, marveling at how she had regained her voice. Stop. The black ooze hesitated as it considering this request then quickly shimmered down her body before disappearing in a cloud of smoke. Uh, what the hell, Sunshine? screamed the voice. We had a deal. I thought you wanted to die. G grandma said, can't die yet. A brief image of her grandmother, bloodied and broken, flashed before her eyes. She saw the shade that had killed her and heard its mocking laughter, then closed her eyes and forced the image from her mind. Her whole body was quaking with rage. When she opened her eyes again, they burned bright red. That thing took my grandmother. I have to kill it before I die. Keanu glanced down and saw a mysterious pattern, the pattern of the shades, burn itself into her left arm. Well, I'll be damned, said the voice cheerfully. Look at that, sunshine. I think you and me are going to be good friends now. Keanu stared intently at her arm. The more emotional she felt, the more the letters seemed ready to puncture her skin and begin infecting the rest of her body. The arm clearly had a will of its own now. St stop, gotta stop. Holding her left arm in her right, Keanu took a deep breath and tried to calm herself. Come on, don't fight it, pleaded the voice. Hate's my favourite dish, and I'm hungry. Let it go, feel the anger, burn with the fire of revenge, thirst for blood, then go out there and... Shut up, shut up and get the hell out of my body. Your body? Oh, that's rich, sunshine, real rich. Look, why don't you just... <laughs> Sorry. Look, why don't you just up and die so I can have this body all to myself? What do you say? I bet those bodies of yours in the area would love to see you dead. Keanu grabbed a nearby shattered glass and tried to saw off the shade, an infected portion of her side. Before she could, her darkened arm grabbed by, grabbed her right wrist, 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 crushing it. Keanu screamed and dropped the shard as the sound of bone crunching on bone filled the air. Ha <laughs> stupid idiot girl, you're possessed now, sunshine, and there ain't no going back. The voice laughed again, loud and long, loud long wail that seemed to go on without end. But possessed, whis whispered Keanu. Yeah, possessed, you and me. We got what you might call a timeshare arrangement. 
Remember, how folks used to think that you were a freak? Well, wait till you get a load of you now. Jenny looked up, tears in her eyes. The sky seemed, seemed smaller somehow, darker. Is it because of that shade? Is it how they see the world? So, uh, listen, put the voice. I know this whole possession thing seems a bit sudden, but it ain't all bad. There's plenty in it for you, too. I'm a very powerful creature, Sunshine, and now that power belongs to you. You got enemies? People you want to kill? I can make it happen. That little fat kid who kept picking on you, that old shade, that squashed granny, will wrap them up in their own assholes. <laughs> no more abuse for you, Sunshine. No more pain. W wait, said Keanu. You're a shade? Why would you want help me kill another shade? What do you think, I'm some kind of racist? Some killing snob? I don't give a god... I, I don't give a good goddamn who you murder, honeypants. I just want to drink from the well. Keanu considered this as she struggled from her feet, the power of the shade coursing through her. The smoke from her house was drifting away with the wind, and she enjoyed the way the cool evening breeze felt on her le new left arm. After a long pause, pause, the voice spoke up again. So, uh, how about it, you and me? We could have uh, some good times together. Look, I'll even take care of the bloody part if you don't want. <sighs> Fuck off, asshole, smuttered up Keanu. I'll handle the killing. <laughs> Screamed the voice. Look at you go, oh sunshine, we're gonna have so much fun. So listen, my name's Tyr Tyrion. And if you ever need me, I'll just be hanging out in this little piece of meat you call a heart. Now get to it. The more you kill, the more your heart turns rotten and sour, and I like rotten and sour. Keanu found herself nodding at the voice. Yeah, she said. Yeah, I think I, this can work. I'm going to find that shade and I'm going to strangle it with me, its own guts. And when I'm done, I'm going to do the same to you, Tyrion. Count on it. Ha, <laughs> laughed Tyrion. I was shit bigger than you, and so good luck with that. Oh, and hey, uh, one more thing. Right now, you and me are sharing this body, but if you ever run out of hate, if you ever, you know, go soft, then I'm gonna take over everything. So keep on killing, sunshine, and watch your back. The voice grew fainter and graded, gradually faded away, fading to somewhere deep inside Keanu herself. Keanu waited until she was sure the voice was gone, and waved her new arm around a few times. It feels perfectly normal, she thought. It feels like mine. Desperately, she began poking and prodding at the new limb, determined to find something wrong with it. She didn't feel, want it to feel normal. That would mean the creature inside her had already won. I'm not a shade. I'm Keanu. Repeating this mantra in her mind, she slowly began digging through the rubble of her house, being careful to ignore a certain red stained spot in the corner. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity of heartbreaking work, she found what she had, was looking for. It was the wreath of lunar tears. Though it had been through hell and back, the garland's petals were as bright as ever. Keanu started, started to place it in her hair, then slowly lowered the wreath and stared at it. I'm sorry, Grandma. I am so sorry. But I don't deserve to wear this anymore. I'm possessed, corrupted, a freak. And this time, I don't think there's any going back. Holding the flowers to her heart, Keanu fell to the ground and sobbed. As night gradually lightened to dawn and the people of the area rose to their daily lives, she remained in that position, as if tears could somehow wash away the horror that now affected her world. Alive! Stay alive! Stay alive! Grandma! You gotta live! You gotta come back to us! <sighs> After all that, I actually feel so sorry for Keanu with, with what she's been through, like, yikes. Emil, you were the one calling me, weren't you? 
You still recognize me? Of course. I knew you right away. <laughs> Thank you, Kaine. Welcome back, Kaine. Well, you grew up. So, how long has it been? Five years. That's a long time. Hmm. Any luck with Yona? We are still no closer to finding her. We need a way to locate the Shadow Lord. By the way, this is for you. Is that a lunar tear? It's not as good as your grandmother's, but I tried. No, it's great. Thank you. Kaine waking from her long, petrified sleep. Emil's unflagging kindness. Our reunion was a happy one, and we let it wash over us like rain. That is, until Devola and Popola had to go and ruin it all. Are you kidding me? You can't be serious! Ah, oh, yeah, the null head in the village, I remember that. Please, try to understand. People are tired and scared, and... I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to bear the brunt of that. This is crap, and you know it! It's okay. We can sleep outside. No one's sleeping outside. You and Kaine saved this village, and now they want to run you out? People are afraid of us. And really, I understand. I mean, look at me. To be honest, I get it with Emil, but Kiane really, d other than her lack of clothing, she looks pretty much normal, and she can easily cover it up. Anyway. As long as you're still with us, I can deal with it. Right, Kaine? I'm used to sleeping outside. But... We'll see you later. Sorry about this. Hmm. What is the matter? Kaine always sleeps outside. I never thought about that until just now. Never even occurred to me. Damn it. We should turn in. I didn't get much sleep that night. For the first time in my life, I hated Devola. For the first time in my life, I doubted Popola. But those feelings are pointless in the end. They said and did what they did for the sake of the village. protect it from the horror of the Shades. <laughs> really, how can I blame Devola and Popola? In the end, I'm just as bad. Because I never once stopped to think about Kaine and Emil's situation myself. I should apologize to Kaine and Emil, but what good would that even do? I got a fire going for Wait, you. is that? Campfires are weird. I'm so happy to get to talk to you again, Kaine. Oh, this is so cute. I love this already. Yeah, me too. I tried everything I could think of to save you, you know. I polished you with a special cloth. I poured warm water over you. I... 
Wait, you poured water on me? Could have done something, possibly. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't really do much except make you all shiny. <laughs> hey, Emil. Thanks for saving me. I guess you noticed how I look different now. I'm sorry, Emil. I'm sorry for all of it. Well, I mean, this new form isn't all bad, you know? At least I can look at you when we talk, right? That's true. Hey, so why don't you tell me something about yourself? I'm not very interesting. Sorry. Come on. I just want to know you better. Please? Fine. This all happened when I was a kid. Before the whole shade possession thing. My body is different. And when the villagers found out about it, they started treating me like a freak. But one person, my grandmother, accepted me just as I was. No matter how bad things got, she gave me the strength to keep going. She's really special to you, huh? Yeah. Oh, hey! That gives me an idea! Since we cured your petrification, we should start looking for a way to cure your possession and my body. Mm. I know we can do it if we all work together. Heck, it'll probably be super easy. Probably easier said than done, probably. Let me guess, more warm water? <laughs> okay, can we just forget I told you about that? <laughs> Sleep well? Sure. And yet your red eyes tell a different tale. Don't be so hard on yourself, lad. I need to go see Devola and Popola. Very well. Well, I'm going to finish this video here, so thank you all very much for watching. Make sure that you smash that like button and subscribe for more new replicant content. And until next time, see ya.